Welcome to the fast world of Hot Wheels. These iconic toy cars have been a part of pop culture for decades, shaping memories and turning everyday moments into epic adventures down those classic orange tracks. Today we're DOSS behind Hot Wheels. From initial 3D prototypes to die-cast molding, vibrant paint applications, and precise axle engineering, we'll explore how these miniature masterpieces are brought to life in state-of-the-art factories. See how technology and craftsmanship combine to make the fastest, coolest cars on the planet. Don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button for more behind-the-scenes dives into the creation of cool stuff. In 1968, Elliot Handler, one of the brains behind Mattel, decided to take on Matchbox cars. Everyone thought he was crazy, but guess what? Hot Wheels hit the shelves and became an instant sensation. These weren't just your run-of-the-mill toy cars. They were flashy, fast, and cooler than anything out there, thanks to designer Harry Bentley Bradley. The first model was a slick, dark blue custom Camaro that kicked things off with a bang. What made them so special was that Spectra Flame paint, those red line wheels, and the working suspension. Also, they could hit scale speeds of 200 miles per hour. Some colors, like hot pink, weren't too popular with boys back then, but now they're collector's gold. Who saw that coming? It's called the Pink Rear Loader Beach Bomb. And what's unique about this car is that this was the first attempt at Mattel to make a Volkswagen VW bus. And when they made it, they put the surfboards on the backside, they put a small sunroof on the top of the car, and then this pink rear load beach bomb was one of the only two made in the color pink, which was an attempt to sell toy cars to girls. By 1969, they roped in another genius, Ira Guilford, who gave us hits like the Twin Mill and the Beach Bomb. Fun fact, the original beach bomb was so wobbly it got scrapped, but now it's worth up to $70,000. Imagine finding that in your toy bin. The 70s had their ups and downs. Sizzler cars were awesome. Plain enamel paints? Not so much. But by 1974, they bounced back with vibrant decals and fresh designs. Then came the 80s, and things got even better. Real riders had rubber tires, those iconic blue cards, and even McDonald's Happy Meal tie-ins. Hot Wheels were everywhere. In the 90s, treasure hunts became the ultimate collector's prize, and creative paint jobs kept fans hooked. Everyone remembers how legendary the Volkswagen drag bunner of the automotive world. Going on, could just be a solid. Some ideas come from real cars you'd see on the streets, racetracks, or car shows, like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, or even vintage classics. While Aya is locked in, they whip out their sketch pads and get to work. This step isn't just about making the car look cool, it's also about figuring out how it'll work. Will the wheels roll smoothly? Does the design fit within the size constraints? Can it handle those epic loops and jumps on the track? They also tweak and refine every little detail, from the angle of the spoiler to the way the headlights are shaped. This is where they really iron out the design, making sure it's both jaw-droppingly awesome and track-ready. Here's where things start to get real, literally. The th durability. Will it survive being tossed, dropped, or launched off a track at high speed? Then comes balance. If the car wobbles or flips too easily, it's back to the drawing board. Finally, they test it on those famous orange Hot Wheels tracks, making sure it zips through loops and around curves like a pro. Once the car has passed all the tests, it's time to create the molds. This step involved these molds we all know and love. In this step, the metal body of the car is created using a process called die casting, where molten metal is poured into the molds. This and chassis all come together on the assembly line. Machines and workers work side by side to snap, screw, and fasten everything into place. Quality control inspectors are stationed at various points along the line, making sure every car meets the Hot Wheels standard. If a wheel doesn't roll perfectly, or a paint job has a smudge, that car doesn't make the cut. Only the best of the best are sent to the next step. After assembly, the cars are carefully packaged. Whether they're destined for a collector's shelf or a kid's toy box, Hot Wheels cars need to look amazing right out of the package. Most are placed in classic blister packs, complete with bold graphics and branding that make them impossible to resist. Special edition cars might get fancier packaging, like boxes with see-through windows or unique designs. Every detail of the packaging is carefully considered, adding to the car's overall appeal. Finally, the cars are packed into boxes and shipped off to stores around the world. From toy aisles to specialty shops, Hot Wheels cars find their way into the hands cooler. It all kicked off with a simple but genius idea. Build tiny cars that looked fast and could really roll. Mattel hit the nail on the head with those iconic redline wheels and designs that made you feel like you were holding a race car, not a toy. 
But what really makes Hot Wheels legendary is how it's managed to stick around, decade after decade, still rocking the toy aisle. From super limited edition models to wild collaborations and off-the-wall track designs, Hot Wheels has kept things fresh while making sure we never forget the classics. Whether you're a die-hard collector or someone who remembers the thrill of launching cars down that plastic track, Hot Wheels has created a legacy that's all about fun, speed, and a whole lot of nostalgia. Alright, that's a wrap. If you love this ride through Hot Wheels history, give us a thumbs up.